Hey BK here. I just wanted to do a little quick intro and uh, to today's vlog, vlog number two for BK and the Understanding. Uh, I guess we call it BK at You vlog. Um, today I had my friend Kevin stop by uh, to pick up my initial masters of his original songs. And so I thought it'd be a good idea to have him uh, on the vlog today and do like a similar to a podcast style, but a little more casual even than that. A uh, little talk with him, or interview if you will. And so what you're about to see is the raw footage of that. Uh, before uh, we start that though, once again I wanted to remind viewers that at the time of this video, um, October 1st, of 2021, um, that the best way you could support BK and Understanding is to go to our band camp and purchase our music and help us out right there. Uh, over time we'll add ways to support us and over time hopefully we'll be able to offer physical media and more merch but as of October 1st 2021 the best way to support us is to go to our band camp and buy our music and so it's uh, https colon slash slash bkandtheunderstanding.bandcamp.com and uh, I'll put that below um, today I will honor our guest Kevin and put the links he mentions in, in our talk first and then I'll put the Beacon Understanding Bandcamp underneath. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoy our hangout and uh, get to know Kevin Wayne Johnson a little bit. We've been friends for a long time, so thank you for watching. BK here with uh, Beacon Understanding again, uh, another vlog entry. Here with my friend Kevin Wayne Johnson. Hello, everybody. Another singer-songwriter. Um, Kevin and I have known each other for a good while. We grew up together. Yeah. And uh, he came down to uh, came up to where I live to pick up some songs we, I mixed and mastered for him. So hopefully you guys will get to hear soon. And uh, figured for one of the vlog entries, might as well uh, do like a small talk, a little interview with him. Yeah. Sounds good to me. What's been going on with you? Man, just uh, trying to play as much as possible. Uh, jumping on every open mic I can get to, booking shows. Um, I played in New Mexico a couple weeks ago, which was a lot of fun. I'm heading to California next week. Oh, man, it's, it's already coming cool. up. I yeah, it's just next week. Like I, I got to start making some plans. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got, I got 18 hours worth of driving ahead of me, so get one you, way. Get you a good ebook or a good yeah. playlist. Yeah. And just, uh, or just silence, you know, yeah. it depends on what you need. Yeah, I'll probably alternate between all three of those. So where are you going to be playing at in California? California, I'll be at 29 Palms, California, um, at a place called Kitchen in the Desert. Kitchen in the Desert. It's right on the edge of the Joshua Tree National Park. Um, a buddy of mine has a motel out there called Ramsey 29 Palms. Ramsey 29 Palms, okay. And uh, they're they're going to be nice enough to, uh, to let me come out there and play some music. So I'm super excited. That's awesome, man. Yeah, I've yeah. never been to Joshua Tree. I'd like to go. I've somewhere. never been to California, so I'm I'm really excited for that. Yeah, opportunity. it's a, it's a good trip. Good trip. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. It's always good to experience something a little bit different than yeah. what we're used to. But other than that, just trying to book some local shows. Uh, I got Clifton, Texas, on October fifteenth. Okay. Foothills Bar and Grill there. Yeah. Um, is, is that the best bar in Clifton? It's the only bar in Clifton. There we go. Okay. So yes, yes, it is. It's just if yes, you're nearby, is. just look up Clifton Bar. Bar in Clifton, be Texas. Good. You got it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that should be fun. Um, yeah, just trying to book as much as possible and play as much as possible, write as much as possible. Man, that's awesome. So okay, you played in uh, Clovis. What was the name of the? Uh, it was a brewery, right? Yes, there's a brewery there in Clovis uh, called Bandolero Brewery. Bandolero Brewery. Okay. Let me get those words right. Yeah. And uh, I remember you told me it was pretty good uh, good stuff. The yeah. Brews. The beer was phenomenal. Yeah, I had, uh, I think I said, I had three beers while I was there. Yeah. You know, which is, I was there for about four hours, so yeah. that's that's a good pace. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, I had uh, Poncho and Lefty was one of their beers I had. Oh, yeah. Um, that one was really good. I had the New Mexico IPA, which I really enjoyed. And the third one is, oh, uh, uh, English class. Okay. That was the stout that I had. They were all very good. What was the ABV? Do you remember? I don't. I don't. I think the English class was the strongest, but I could be wrong. Yeah. 
but it was very you know, neat. I'm a stout man. No, it was super cool brewery, super cool people. Everybody that worked there was phenomenal. All the people I met uh, in the audience, they were all great. So it's just a, a blast all around. And Clovis is a cool, cool town. It's a, uh, it's very. It looks like it was built in 1950 with a vision of what the future would look like. Mm-hmm. You know, those futuristic kind of buildings, and it's all still there. Like, it hasn't been torn down and remodeled. It's all those still old buildings. So yeah. it's very cool. A railroad that runs right there, like, beside the town. So, you know, I think it used to be a pretty big stop for the railroads, from what I heard. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you could, yeah, you can see that it was... Uh, somebody told me they used to call Clovis Little Chicago. Because it was like anything you could do in Chicago, you could do in Clovis. Oh, so yeah, I think uh, that's changed. That's what I've heard. That's what I heard. That's the word on the street in Clovis. Uh, but no, it's a cool place. Man, I had a, had a blast. Man, and they had definitely have a strong uh, alien uh, culture. Yeah, I, actually, I, I drove on down to Roswell to uh, to check out the aliens, um, and all I saw were a bunch of alien statues. Yeah. Um, which was which was interesting. Um, I listened. I was listening to Roswell podcast on the way to Roswell just to get in the spirit. Okay. So I got to Roswell and I was like, "Yeah, alien stuff." And it was just like, it was uh, it was you know there was aliens everywhere. <laughs> uh, I did I did find some good stuff at the uh, Roswell Goodwill. Yeah. I found a 1958 version of the board game Sorry. Wow. A Parker Brothers Chase game. And a 1975 version of the board game Mousetrap. Wow. Complete. All the pieces were in there. Only in Clovis. Even No, this was in the Roswell. Oh, I'm sorry. Only in Roswell. Uh, I I found some other stuff in Clovis as well. Yeah. Uh, I found some cool stuff at the Clovis Goodwill, too. That's my thing. I like to hit up Goodwills wherever I go because there's treasures everywhere. But, uh, yeah, the the Mousetrap I found in Roswell was from 1975. It still had the original rubber bands in there. They had the game. Road. Oh, they were rotten. Yeah, okay. yeah, they weren't any good, but they were still there. It almost said rodent. They, yeah, they were rodent. They were rodent. They were rodent. So um, I looked that up. Rodent. What did I find? In the Clovis Goodwill, I found some shoes, some shirts, uh, a new tip jar, because I forgot to bring my tip jar with me, um, a Denver Broncos mug. Good stuff. There's good stuff everywhere. Man, it's got to look for it. You know, I've been to Clovis... A few times, but usually it's when I'm on the road to somewhere like Colorado mm-hmm. or uh, I think last time Mount Zion in Utah. We yeah. Were, uh, yeah. And so I've never really taken a lot of time to closely look at Clovis. Yeah, but they, I did see they had, similar to Roswell, a lot of the alien uh, references here and there mm-hmm. and a little memorabilia. Now you also saw there was a, some kind of a Big Lebowski themed. Yeah, there was place. a brewery there called Red Hook. Brewing, if I remember right, Red Hook or Red Door? Red Hook, I believe. Um, and it, their whole building was painted like with Lebowski murals. So yeah. That was very cool. And that's I didn't get one chance of my to go favorite in, films. I didn't get a chance to go in there and check it out, but uh, I got, got a few pictures of it. It's, uh, next time I'm there, I'll definitely check that out. Yeah, I love The Big Lebowski. It's one of my favorite films. I possibly have seen it more than I've seen The Lord of the Rings. I've, I've, seen, just, I've seen it once. And uh, oh, man, I so don't good. No, I, I didn't even. I don't even know if I caught the whole thing. I enjoyed what I saw. Mm-hmm. I got to I got to check it out. Oh, that's hilarious! So many good lines from it. So many good lines. And at the time, it was it had the most recorded uh, f words in a film. Yeah. And then Friday, I think after next, beat it. I think. And some others have come out. Wolf after. of Wall Street, I think, holds the record. Okay, now, now. I could Wolf be wrong. Yeah, it may be something that has superseded that mm-hmm. since. But at the time it came out, it was the most. Man. But they had great, great, great comedy. One of, one of my favorite films. Yeah, so that's cool. I know yeah. when I was in Portland, they had uh, the big Legron- Legronsky, I think. I'm trying to remember. It's ba- the owner's last name. So he used it because he's also a, a big uh, Lebowski fan. That was pretty cool. Yeah, I remember you sent me pictures of that place. The that's best, best cool. white Russian, a.k.a. Caucasian yeah, I've ever had. you got to have a white Russian uh, you know, if you're a Lebowski-themed bar. And I met, they had an artist there that had painted some murals of the dude. He was there, got to meet him, really good artist. And uh, the owner came in with one of those uh, cardigans. I can't remember who makes those things, but they're really expensive. Mm-hmm. But, you know, if you're a huge fan, you'll, you want to get one. have one. It's that southwestern look. 
that was pretty cool. But enough about me. Uh, so here you're picking up some music, and uh, we're going to try to get it ready and out there as soon as we can. And, uh, I guess we could talk a little bit more about your music. Yeah, definitely, man. You were you know gracious enough to uh, to record a bunch of songs that I had written, which I'm so thankful for. Um, you know, it's just so cool to hear hear yourself recorded and like mastered and remastered and all those words. Yeah, you're uh, the only one who's heard the changes so far. Yeah, it's very cool to hear. <laughs> it's very cool to hear. It's kind of uh, discombobulating at times, you know, because you're like uh-huh. you're listening to yourself is kind of strange, but yeah, it's so cool, man. And, and I just I appreciate you doing it. Yeah, I'm it's glad to. Do. Glad to be there to help out, and yeah. friend, help you get started. And, uh, I'm kind of technologically challenged, you know. I don't, uh, I don't have one of those, uh, you know, computers. Oh yeah, computers. Yeah. So, uh, and uh, and you do. So yeah, that helps like, out. That helps out a lot. I have like five. That helps out a lot. Computers. It's yeah. hard. I was one. I was originally wanting to record my album on cassette, yeah. on a boombox. You just reminded me. I have a gift for you. Today. Oh yeah, I didn't mention yeah. that. So, uh, uh, you know what? so I yeah, could. A cassette coming soon. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that would that still would be cool. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I don't know how efficient it would be. It could. It has the potential to be extremely efficient, dude. You know what would be cool? To go to like Goodwills and buy old like Walkmans or Tape Mans or old cassette players mm-hmm. and sell them as a package deal. Like okay. You sell the cassette player and the cassette at the same time. Okay. Because if you get the cassette player cheap enough, like you could, if you get a cassette player for five bucks, you sell the cassette and the player together for twenty bucks. Okay. It's genius, man. So are you talking about like you would make the cassette of your music? I'd make a cassette of my music and, and, and package it, and package with it with a cassette player. player. So I not, got not you. Now I'm following. Yeah. Okay. That, yeah. That's that's a good so, idea. Uh, so, you know, kind of like a special edition package, like you get a cassette player and the cassette. Dude, you hand draw your own art. Oh, for sure. And you could totally do a Daniel Johnston. For sure. Yeah. He used to sell his cassette, homemade cassettes, $2 a piece. Each of them were master tapes. That's incredible. Yeah, he didn't He didn't understand that you could dub, make copies of your cassette wow. tapes. So he just went and live recorded over and over again. Until it. finally someone did. Yeah, it's like, hey, fill that tape. You save yourself a lot of money. copy it is. But o- over time, people started talking about it in Austin, and uh, they yeah. found out each one of them had unique, unique tapes. That's and so they started cool, coming man. together and building a community around it. I wonder how many of those are still out there. There's no talent, and, and un- unfortunately, many would have been lost. Yeah. Because they, you know, tapes, if they're not kept, the, uh, the tape itself will rot. Yeah. But I know that they've done their best to get as, their hands on as many as possible just so they can preserve them. That's cool. I didn't know that. Yeah, he's a pretty fascinating guy. He passed yeah. away last year, unfortunately. Yeah. Oh, he's got some good tunes, man. I really I really enjoy his music that I've heard. Very inspiring. And he's a big influence on my start, too. Just kind of just that. Just the DIY. Do it yourself. Yeah. Who cares? You just got to do it. Yeah. He's sure. not the only one, but he's one. I know you've had some inspirations get started, right? You yeah. An old friend of yours. Did you want to mention him? You? No, no. The uh, you said you used to. He passed away a few years ago. Oh uh, yeah, a good buddy of mine named Justin Barnett. Yeah, from from Heiko. He uh, he's somebody like every time I play music, I think about him because when I first met him, like. All he wanted to do was play music, you know. That was like, and and he would play wherever. Like if somebody said you can come play out here, he would be there to play. Like, and he played like he, he just loved doing it, and he was fearless in doing it. So uh, I keep, try to carry that with me, just uh, just to remember that, you know, like that joy and that like excitement around the whole thing. That's a, that's a big inspiration for me. Yeah, that's something I think about a lot. But yeah, and then just, you know, like into getting back in touch with you has been a huge deal, part of it as well. Just having somebody to talk with about it and, and be excited about it and who's kind of doing the same thing I am. That's such a cool, cool part of it. You know, our friendship is just uh, connecting on that level and, and being able to make that connection. That's, that's, that's been a tough one too, man. It's, yeah, 
it's, it's, uh, it's really inspirational. It's good to have friends, period. I want to yeah, start there. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And, uh, you know, as we get older, it's harder to maintain friendships. Yeah. And a lot of it is just responsibilities of life, and you just mm -hmm. go different directions. So, you know, it makes it more valuable when, you, when you're able to keep those friendships, and you appreciate them much more. It is, that part's good, and then definitely glad to help, you know, learning from my own experiences of feeling all alone and, and figuring stuff out uh, with, you know, little help to none most of the time. Yeah. I'm glad to be able to give you a better foundation oh, yeah, than that. Yeah, it's been a huge help, huge help. Otherwise, I'd be uh, just still playing playing in my living room for my dog, you know. Or maybe the only bar I've lived in. Yeah, maybe. I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> That's funny. So, you know, uh, you mentioned we were hanging out earlier about some places you played around Waco. Do you want to talk about any of those? Yeah, uh, I got to play at a brewery there in Waco called Waco Ale Company, which was a lot of fun. Um, they were super cool people over there and good beer there as well. Uh, I think there I just I stuck with one beer the whole time. Um, it was their... their uh, the lower ABV IPA. Okay. Um, I can't remember. It's Sunday Driver, maybe? It was their, their day drinking beer. Um, it was really good, and there's cool people there. I uh, played at the Horny Toad Bar and Grill mm -hmm. in my hometown of Cranfels Gap, Texas. Now, you're really from Cranfels Gap? I'm really from Cranfels Gap, yeah. And your uh, parents don't just own land? No, no. I grew up, okay. I spent every day of my childhood there. All right. Uh, so, yeah, I'm really from Cranfels Gap. But do you um, know other people from Cranfels Gap? I do. I know uh, almost <laughs> everyone from Cranfels Gap. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that. yes, yes. I am really there's from Cranfels Gap. There has been some claims around, uh, around Cranfels Gap. people who say they're from Cranfels Gap. I won't name any names, yeah. but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's apparently it's real popular to claim you're from Cranfield's Gap and not really be from there. But oh. yes, I, uh, I born am, and bred. I am born and bred. Maybe not literally. But I, was, no I was I was born 20 miles down the road from <laughs> Cranfield's Gap, and I made the short trip and I never left. So there you uh, go. yeah, I'm really from Cranfield's Gap. <laughs> I I uh, I've been part of the uh, population 300 for uh, for most of my life. So yes, there we go. And you, you know, it fascinates, fascinates me all these stories that old Kevin here will tell me. People he meets in this tiny, uh, you know, what is it, Central Texas town? Yeah. Like, I can't remember. Have you met Roger Staubach? Yeah, I stepped on his glasses. <laughs> what a jerk. Yeah, yeah. I was working <laughs> at the Horny Toad Barn Grill, and and Roger and his family came in there to eat, and uh, I was I think I was getting their bill ready, and I just stepped on his glasses that he had on the ground. It's his fault for having them on the ground. Though. Yeah, of yeah. course. It's definitely his fault. But uh, I don't Stick think I broke them. I didn't break them or anything. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, a lot of cool people come through there. Like, Roger Staubach's been through there. Uh, who else have I met? Jay Novacek. Uh, Ooh, that's cool. Uh, I didn't get to meet them when they came through, but Jewel and uh, Tom Murray, when okay. they were married, came through there. Um, who else has been through there? Now, George W., right? Or am I wrong on that? Not, Has not, been there? Not that I've met. Ross Perot Ross has. Perot, okay. Yeah, I met Ross Perot. Uh, that was cool. Um, Chris Birdman Anderson, formerly, uh, I don't know if he's still in the NBA, but okay. I got to meet him. He's a cool, cool cat. That sounds vaguely familiar. Uh, he's a, a tall, white guy with a bunch of tattoos. Okay. So, the last 15, 20 years, Bob. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, he played for the Heat. Uh, I, I, remember, I know he played for the Heat. I'm trying to remember the other teams he played for, but I'm completely blanking on it right now. Okay. But yeah, he was, a, he was a cool guy. It's a fascinating place. And then there's now a, a, a recording studio not far, right? The not Wall far out of town, yeah. What's yeah. the name of their studio? Oh. oh cool. Mustang International, maybe? I could be wrong. Well, you know, I could also just My add, apologies, Matt. I could well, also just later yeah. on look it up. Yes. Put text on. That. That's what I did in the first blog is... When as I was speaking naturally, you know, I had my grammatical errors or even like one of my sentences, like it came out making no sense. Mm -hmm. So I just went and added text of what I intended to say versus what I really said. Yeah, so sentences will do that sometimes. But that's, you know, that's how yeah, I Yeah, that's cool, can. man. Yeah, it's a, uh, Cranfield's Gap is a fun place to be. I agree. I always enjoy visiting and uh, glad to, and there's good people there. Good people yeah, there. Yeah, I like your Great company. There. Go to the Horny Toad if you ever visit. 
and you're bound to run into some interesting characters and they will be more than glad to talk to you almost always. I, I'm, I'm willing to bet anyone who's not in the mood to talk will not be at the Toad. Am I right? Yeah, either that or they'll <laughs> just tell you they're not in the mood to talk. You yeah. know? People don't have, don't have time to, to waste time. They yeah. don't want to waste their time or yours. So, yeah, they'll just tell you they're not in the mood to talk. Cool, cool. Well, yeah, I appreciate it. Anything else you want to say for it? Because it's probably going over. Up Man, uh, just uh, feel free to check me out on all the social media platforms. I'm on Instagram at KWJ Music. I'm on Facebook at Kevin Wayne Johnson Music. I'm on MySpace at uh, I Make Static. Don't believe, that was a long time ago. It's probably all uh, I am. You can ask Jeeves about me. Um, Bing me. Um, you know, <laughs> the internet. Just I'm on the internet. Okay. Kevin Wayne Johnson Music. You'll find me. All right. Well, cool. Yeah. Thanks for for hanging out. Yeah. Thanks for this. thanks for thanks for having me. Yeah. Well, cool. We'll log off there. Um, we'll see what the, I may do an intro and in closing or not. But otherwise, than that. Thanks for tuning in. Cool. So you just finished watching today's talk with Kevin Wayne Johnson. Please check out his stuff. And, uh, you know, if he's playing near you, go go watch him. Uh, if, you're, if you're in California and you can make it to the Joshua Tree Show, go there. And uh, same thing for Beacon Understanding. If uh, Keep an eye out for us, and if we're in your area, come watch us. And uh, once again, in closing, I just want to remind guys, uh, you guys that the best way to support us as of uh, the time of this video is to go to our band camp and purchase our music. And once Kevin Wayne Johnson has his stuff out, once we're done mastering it and getting it uh, to the degree we like it, we'll let you know and he'll come back and we'll advertise that. Um, but once again, the URL for BK Lunchstain's band camp is https colon slash slash BK and the understanding dot band camp dot com. And as previously mentioned, I will list that below after putting up the uh, social media uh, stuff that Kevin mentioned uh, to honor him today. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you on the next one.